recently watching the labor report, you might have missed it, but United Technologies, the diversified industrial that makes elevators, aerospace components like engines, as well as climate control equipment, uh, security systems, hosted its annual analyst meeting today. And while the company simply reiterated its full year guidance, it sure sounds like they told a great story. I know that because earlier today, I got a chance to check in with Greg Hayes, the fabulous chairman and CEO of United Technologies. I have never seen him so bullish on pretty much every single part of his business. Take a look. Greg, I am looking at numbers, including 2017 expectations, that to me look about, I'd say, strong in almost every category. Things are looking good for your company right now. Things are really looking good, Jim. I think, uh, especially on the commercial side, we've got really strong backlogs on the uh, commercial construction businesses at, at Otis, at Carrier. Uh, it's going to be a good year. Well, this, I feel a little different talking to you now than I have even just a year ago. What's changed? Many of these categories are going to be single-digit up, mid-digit up. This is very different from when I first saw you. You know, I think it's just the, uh, the we're finally starting to see some of the benefits um, of additional spending in the economy. We're starting to see a little bit of inflation picking up. Uh, clearly, since the election, we've seen... Uh, a consumer sentiment pick up, and that's really being reflected in our businesses. So, you know, I think we started the year thinking the U.S. might grow at about 2 percent, and Europe maybe 1, 1 and a half. I think those numbers are going to be light. I think it's going to be a lot better than that now. A lot better? I mean, that is quite contrary. I mean, you think we could do three? Oh, I think, it, yeah, absolutely we can do three. And if you think about it, Jimmy, you know, look at the stock market, what's happened since the election. Uh, if we get uh, tax reform done this year, if we get an infrastructure bill, if we get some regulatory reform, uh, I think you're going to see some real momentum in the economy. And clearly you saw it in the jobs report today, right? And you have more than 200,000 jobs added. So there is a, we are at full employment. We're starting to see labor uh, costs tick up a little bit. That's all good signs for the economy. Well, let's drill down on some of these. What do you think about tax reform? I'm, sometimes I'm concerned that maybe uh, this re repeal and replace health care debate is going to get in the way of what could be pretty amazing for a company that, that actually, like yours, that pays in the high 20 percent for tax. Yeah, look, tax reform for us is the number one priority for the year. Obviously, the administration wants to get the, uh, the health care uh, repeal, replace done first, uh, but we are very optimistic on this uh, tax reform. Uh, we've been in Washington over the last couple of weeks talking to uh, Ways and Means Committee Chairman Brady and others. Uh, we're positive on the, the House blueprint as it's laid out. It's got some good things. It's got some bad things. Uh, but on the whole, this lower rate down to 20%, the ability to access our foreign cash with a territorial system, those are all very positive for UTC. Now, what I saw, just I'll just pick some that I know people are very familiar with. For instance, uh, HVAC, uh, carrier, up mid-single digits for the Americas. That is radically different from what I thought it would be at this point. Yeah, no, it's, uh, again, the, the business is doing very, very well. Orders uh, have ticked up uh, really across both our co commercial HVAC as well as residential HVAC. Uh, we think we're going to have a very good year there. Uh, you know, last year, uh, overall, our climate controls business was down about a point. This year, we think we could be up three points or so. Uh, also, Otis. I mean, Otis has been kind of like, well, blah, you know, it's a great business. Maybe one day it'll pick up. You're talking about very big numbers there, too. Well, look, Otis has the biggest backlog we've had since 2007. Uh, here in North America, we've got record backlog. The only problem we've got is not enough people to put elevators in. Uh, in Europe, we started to see very strong momentum in the back half of the year with orders up 14 percent. In China, the biggest market, uh, while it's down, at least it's showing some signs of recovery here uh, in the first part of the year. Let's talk about aerospace because the aerospace is, has been strong throughout. Uh, we got a president that obviously wants to have uh, more defense spending, so I'm going to conflate a little Pratt & Whitney with, with, uh, with aerospace. But this business also, even since December when we talk, seems like it's stronger. Well, look, aerospace is, is one of those businesses, Jim, we don't worry about it kind of quarter to quarter. You think about it more secularly. You know, today there's like 26,000 commercial aircraft in service. In the next 20 years, that'll be 46,000. Uh, revenue passenger miles, what we look at in terms of total traffic, was $4 trillion last year. By 2030, that'll be $9 trillion. And it's those big macro um, events, there's the big macro trends that are actually going to drive aerospace growth. So, um, look, the airlines are doing well. They haven't added a lot of capacity. They've been smart about it. They've been raising prices. And uh, we are still seeing a lot of growth in the emerging markets. 
Uh, you know, China, we're you know, going to add 100 new runways this year. Uh, revenue passenger miles in China probably up 14 or 15 percent. Those are all very, very positive. And again, these, these aircraft will be out there for 30 years. So we're very bullish on the commercial aerospace side. Now, I know the president's been involved with F-35 and Marilyn Houston, uh, Lockheed Martin. They've had some discussions, uh, kind of rolled back price. Is that something that eventually rolls back to Pratt & Whitney? Well, so Pratt & Whitney has had an ongoing uh, cost target with the uh, joint program office, the JPO. Uh, for a number of years. And as we continue on the, in the production, we right on the cost curve that we've committed to the government. And that's yeah, about an 89% learning curve. So every time we double production, uh, we're coming down in cost by about 11%. And that's exactly what uh, we committed to when we started the program, and we're right on that line. So, you know, the, the aircraft itself uh, is a little bit different story. I think you know, they've had some fits and starts. But clearly, Lockheed's uh, on track to get that cost down to a, what would they consider to be a pretty reasonable level. Hey, Greg, you were one of the first people to actually had interaction with the president. It was kind of one of those things where there was an art of the deal negotiation that ended up pretty good for everybody. What's your relationship like with the president now? And what, what are those meetings like? Because uh, you, you probably have more contact than almost anybody. <laughs> well, look, I think uh, we have a, a, good and work, a good working relationship with the administration. I think it's important to keep in mind, you know, the uh, UTC, about 12 percent of our revenue comes from DOD. So it's important to keep that relationship. But I think more importantly, the current administration has reached out to business in a way the last administration has never done. I think uh, getting a chance to go to the White House to have your voice heard is very, very important. And I think, you know, the Trump administration is trying to do the right thing to bring jobs back to America, to grow the American economy. And we're certainly very supportive of all of those things. If you had to put another plan up. It sounds like you would, and you had a, you could do it around the world, but the friction wouldn't be so bad to ship. Rather build it here than Mexico, than Canada, than uh, Europe. If again, if there's no friction cost to travel. So, Jim, I think the the key for UTC is we manufacture in the countries that we sell into. So, in China, for instance, uh, where we sell about eighty thousand elevators a year, we have Chinese elevator manufacturing facilities. Uh, we've, or for the U.S., we've got a big facility down in Florence, South, South Carolina, for the U.S. market. For the European market, we've got a factory in Gion, France. The key for us is you've got to be in the local markets uh, because over the long term, as you know, labor arbitrage doesn't really last. And you want to make sure that you're not going to get adversely impacted by exchange rates. So for us, if, if the markets are growing here in the U.S., which we think they will, that means we're going to manufacture here in the U.S. If the market's going to grow in Europe, we're going to build in, in Europe as well. Keep in mind, you know, more than 60 percent of our revenues come from outside of the U.S. So. Uh, we've got to be in all of those markets. All right, one last question. Let's say you get tax reform, so your 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 rate goes down nicely. Let's say you get repatriation. Is this more jobs that you will create? Is this money back to shareholders? You continue your buyback, maybe increase dividend, or all three? It's probably all three, Jim. You know, if you think about it, we've got about six billion dollars of cash sitting overseas today, and another thirty-one billion permanently reinvested. As I said, about half of our earnings come from overseas, so half of our annual cash comes from overseas. So having the certainty to bring that cash back will give us the opportunity to make additional investments here in our aerospace business, in our commercial businesses, in R&D. Uh, maybe some of that goes to a dividend. Uh, you know, share buyback, we've been doing that now for the last three years. We're in the middle of the $16 billion buyback. Um, probably not a lot more going there, but certainly gives us a lot of options to be able to have that cash and readily available. And maybe even increase organic growth with some of the uh, software things you're doing and some of the organic research and development that's starting to pay off. Yeah, look, the, the, the digital frontier is, is wide open right now, and it presents us a lot of opportunities. We actually had a, a conference today down in South Carolina with the commercial businesses highlighting some of those digital opportunities. And we're not a software company. But we have some of the most sophisticated embedded software in our products already. And being able to use the data coming off of the products, whether it's elevators, air conditioning, or jet engines, all those things give us the opportunity to add value to our customers. And we're looking at all of that. All right, Craig, it is great to talk to you. And I love the tone of things. I, the conference was terrific. Great to see you, as always, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Take okay. care, Jim. Okay, see that's ya. Greg Hayes, chairman and CEO of United Technologies. So much good happening there, even since three, four months ago. Stick with UTech, stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.